एस फ्रॉम लाइन इट स्टार्टेड विद जुबिलेशन Merry making and chanting of the party slogans. One people. It seems to be ending in internal bickering. I cannot wait for this to happen to me. That one day I wake up and my leaders are within RM. <laughs> When I left the bank, I was being paid $20,000 per month. In 2001. When Semujuzo left the journalism was being paid how much per month? <laughs> Grave allegations. There was this crisis, a crisis in which Am Amuriat eventually emerged as a, as a, as a candidate, discussed in the public as dirty money. That's where it cropped up. It was brought by the Secretary General, the Honorable Nana Ramafavi. The party president was one of the recipients. you know i became aware of it discussed it with our close leaders they were not uh, even happy that i was discussing it this double standard should not be accepted and we shall not agree to people who have who talk with their tanks folded the purchases of brand new vehicles from Kupa Motors at Nakawa and sudden construction by the recipients that coincided with the arrival of the money suggest it was in billions the treasury does not know where the money came from they don't know how it was used anger i have of course the record of uh, the lord mayor is very clear you know he's been hopping from organization to organization and this is being done for political expedience mm. <laughs> he thought he would be a mercenary in the fdc yeah. but we don't know, do not have room for any mercenary here we don't and a public meltdown rarely seen on uganda's political scene why did they either bring the 200 million in fdc or return it to the consolidated fund they are now robbing us in the burodi terrain What was first rumored in secret has been broadcast live in full color on national media. The Blue Party is in crisis. A party revered as the bulwark of Uganda's opposition for the last 22 years is crumbling before our very eyes. With the opposition losing the formidable lions whose roar once made the ruling government tremble, has the political grave digger come for the FDC? Will the Blue Party's final resting place be marked in yellow colors? Engineer Patrick Amria told us in one of the recent National Executive Committee meetings that we are headed for a split. That that escalation is likely to continue if leaders don't step back, take a breath and reconsider what all this means. This is the front line. Welcome is the front line my name is Simon Kagwanjala and well it's no longer at ease no can we say it's still one Uganda one people it's a divided blue camp a battle pit in two camps one from Najanankumbi another from Katonga what is at stake money money that is being described as dirty money that was allegedly picked from uh, state house at the height of the 2021 elections second the shady elections well the semuju camp alleges that uh, nandala and group are plotting a sinister attempt to sell the fdc uh, to the national resistance movement in the same fashion mao as they claim took dp to state house a lot of questions what is at stake what does the future hold for the once formidable front the forum for democratic change well tonight i'm joined by the key protagonists in this battle and um, it is honorable 
Semuju Ibrahim Nganda, a very good evening and nice to have you with us. Yes, Njara, thank you and good evening to viewers. On my extreme is Honorable Nathan Nanda Lamafabi, the Secretary General of uh, the Forum for Democratic Change. Good to have you thank and you. a very good evening. Good evening to viewers. You look combative tonight. No, 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 no. And by the way, of course, I'm a farmer. I'm a chairman of the Jewish Cooperative Union. I grow coffee. <laughs> Maybe the coffee is the one making me look unhappy. You're charged with the coffee. Okay. Oh, Our frontliner, um, Ofono Opondo, joins us as well tonight. I missed you last <coughs> week. I hope you're well. I'm well. I've been in Mulanda for a long time. Actually, I've missed the show for about uh, three consecutive Thursdays. But I'm back and glad to join my colleagues, Nathan, uh, my sister-in-law here, and my young brother, Ibra, the one who's kicking a stone. Perhaps before <laughs> I actually move away from you, yeah. there is something rather concerning where I need your take. As we speak, there is a stalemate between government and the National Association of Broadcasters in the wake of a memo from the president directing that all government expenditure on advertising goes strictly to UBC and the vision group. No, no, no. Now, now no. be saying we are giving you a total blackout. No, the thank you. That, that's how can, a, you, how can you give a blackout when you have a government spokesperson here? No, you, the, the, that's you start the, by chasing off. No? The the directive of the president is about a month or two back, but the coaching of the word is the government advice should go through UBC. Because over a long period of time, government has found it unable to directly fund UBC as a broadcast, as a public broadcaster, as ought to be. And in the wisdom of the president and those of us who manage public relations for government, we thought funding through UBC and through the new vision would ameliorate the situation. Now, through it is now up to us and UBC to find out what this through. Can't UBC, for example, this is what we are exploring, sign contracts with other private media organization, like you would have a, a consultancy firm, mm -hmm. a media place, placement, and they do so. So there's discussion going on for, with us in the government and NAB, Although I think their press statement of yesterday was Russia. Yeah, but look we, at the back no, and forth. Yeah, negotiations. That's, no, that's okay. First but, with no, Barrio Munsi. No, back and no, Barrio Munsi. Then is, the Prime Minister. Ba, ba, Barrio Munsi is our team leader in the in the communication sector. And so there's consultations going on. Once we reach a convergence with the NAB and the other sector players, we shall go to the Prime Minister. In fact, we have been given one week. Next week we should be going to the Prime Minister with different scenarios. And once we do so, without varying the, direct, the intent of the directive of the president, the Prime Minister may wish to take the rest of us with her. We explain to the president what this through, what we think the through should be like. And then hopefully the president will give a go ahead. Once that is done, we want to believe uh, the, the Bwahaha. Will be, will be sorted out. But obviously, we cannot, as a government, do it by ourselves without involving the private sector. In any case, if that ban was there, why am I here? Yeah, but everything was compounded by a letter from the PSST <coughs> to all accounting officers well, directing uh, that whoever well, contravenes see, this will be punished, will be well, reprimanded. The, the Secretary, Secretary of the Treasury might have understood it in his way. <laughs> now we are going to bring him back on board and say, look, this letter is saying through. What does through mean? And we shall build those scenarios. Once we are able to convince the right honorable prime minister, we want to believe she will convince also the government machinery, including the president. For now, how are you going to contend with the blackout? Because There's, it's, it's there, already there, started. <laughs> no, even, even that blackout, I don't think it's taking... Uh, Hold because as you can see, you are hosting me. You would have said, your man, tonight you are not here. <laughs> Yesterday we had the, a press conference by the Minister of Information at, at the Media Center. 
you did a wonderful job, you covered. I'm sure tomorrow we shall look at even your own uh, news today. I don't think you have given the government of Uganda a blackout, a total blackout. But we are engaging. I can tell you today, Mr. Kalisa, who is the chairperson, the president of NAB, spoke to me for a long time on phone. He also spoke to the Minister of Information. And we are going to continue that discussion. Well, Honorable Winikiza, <coughs> I'm glad you're joining, you're, you're joining us tonight. And uh, maybe we'll start with this because it affects my bread. Well, I would like to say good evening, viewers. It's been a while, and I'm sorry I've been away from you. I was missing you, you must know that. But I'm glad that I'm back. My sympathies to the Catholic community over the loss of uh, Archbishop the Archbishop Bachenga. Sad. It is so sad. May his soul rest in peace. I think of late government has been doing so many mistakes. So many mistakes after liberalizing the economy. And then you go back and begin patching it. Yes, they have authorized so many media houses to operate. After operate, authorizing many media houses to operate in a way, they want again to tell them go back and sleep because we know that it's government that has the greatest amount of money, amount of money that can enable business persons to keep uh, in business and operate. So when government comes out with a kind of a tall order that all business advertising should be uh, through UBC and, uh, and, and the new vision or the vision group, it is telling other media houses, please relax and just close. It is the same thing that the, the government of Uganda has given to the contractors. They have said many of the constructions in the government departments and agencies should be done by the army. Actually, you shouldn't even uh, forget that they are turning U U UPDF into another higher machinery of uh, private, security. private security. So before you know it, they will be telling Ugandans that anybody wanting to have private security should only go through the UPDF private security company. So I think government of Uganda needs to realign its uh, policies and see whether they rushed into privatization so that they bring back everything to government. Or they just let the economy run as it is. Because we have said this is a, a private-led economy. Government should not interfere into where oh. people want to advertise and where people want to take their businesses. Honorable Nanda Lamafabi, you run a media house. How, very, how hurting is this decision by government? to target UBC and Vision Group alone in advertising expenditure? One, uh, I think uh, what Honorable Winner said, the biggest, biz, uh, the biggest person who has money is government. Of course, it has a lot of money, which it has to expend on goods, on public goods and services. Now, UBC and New Vision, through their government entities, but the reason why other media houses were created was for purposes of competition and service delivery. And the moment you try to bring back a monopoly laws or actions, then you are going to create inefficiency, you are going to create corruption, you are going to create mismanagement. I think it's important that the government reconsiders this. One, if media houses closes, many people are going to lose jobs. Mm -hmm. And if people lose jobs, again, you are creating unemployment. Government does not provide employment directly in public service. It provides when it gives goods and services. It gives, like if you give money to a contractor, he will employ people, but the money came from government to build a road, to build a water dam, whatever the case. So for purpose of creating employment, it's not directed that public service operators are the only one which give you government jobs. But when the government invests in the private sector, it creates jobs. So I think it's important that the government reconsider this. And these are like antitrust laws, these are anti-competitive uh, anti laws. Uh, this, you're bringing anti-competitive, antitrust. These are very dangerous for a state like this one. We have left that uh, more part, we have liberalized the sector. Leave the sector, move on. Unless you must explain why New Vision and uh, UBC cannot compete, then equip it to compete. I think Ofono Pondo 
you are a journalist, you must be able to help your government. Well, thank you very much. Honorable Semuju, as a journalist yourself, um, come politician, how much sense do you make out of the argument that it was time to revamp, to revitalize uh, the state media houses, so that's why this directive came up? Um, I think the mistake with this directive, first of all, if you want to give UBC a new vision business, the decision should have been the either in terms of a percentage that all government adverts, because you also run media platforms, 30% of our adverts will go towards government media platform. And then, because New Vision is not an advertising agency, neither is UBC. And if you read the various laws that Parliament has made, in many of them, you will find a requirement to advertise either in, in a media of uh, wide saturation or to advertise these days we even added the social media. But this thing is not new. There was a time, I think, uh, I'm not sure that it was when Kabushenga was at Media Center, that they had wanted all the government adverts to go through Media Center. The idea at that time was to patronize adverts. You remember at the beginning of Monta 1994, because of independent journalism, no government agency was allowed to advertise with Monta as a way of punishing Monta. Of course, later on, that ban was lifted. I think the adverts should target media houses because every advert has its own audience. If I am going to advertise to school children, there in town must be a radio station that plays music for children. When I was at university, we were listening to music more than news and anything else. So there are considerations when you are advertising. But the trouble of having an aged leader when he's briefed by one group like Ofono, then he, that night it is Ofono's group. And that's why they are now trying to go back. Because, I mean, how can government work like that? That a directive comes, and then you go back to the one who originated it. This should have been an ad ad advice from the communication sector of government. But now you are there, you can't implement it, you are going back to say, sir, what you said cannot work. And that's but how you work as a government. Okay. I have just explained, and the, I'm sure this media house today has run a government advert. So yes, the directive came, and there is no time when we cannot go back to consult the originator of a directive. Even when you pass laws in Parliament, you pass law today, tomorrow somebody comes up, Seeking an amendment. We thought it took effect immediately. I am telling you, please go and look at, ask your advertising department today, tomorrow morning, if they, are, they don't have. So yes, the directive is there, and saying it's wrong. So there's a, really a contention among those of us who are supposed to implement. And we are saying, no, through could mean many things. To some of us, could mean that UBC and UBC can turn, can actually float an advertising agency. There's no harm in doing that. The most important point I'm saying is consultations are going on and we are in touch with the private sector players. Well, let's get to the gist of uh, tonight's <coughs> show, the crisis in FDC. Honorable Semuju, you've come out with very stinging allegations claiming that there is an attempt by Nandala and group to carry FDC to Museveni. <laughs> Could you substantiate this allegation? <clears throat> Let me start with the um, events today at the FDC. Journalists have been beaten, and my sympathy to them as a journalist, but also as a leader. Why were they beaten? Nathan Nandala Mafavi of Dadiri and uh, engineer Patrick Amriat gave an order that the FDC chairman must not address a press conference at the FDC headquarters. Are you sure about this? I am very sure. 
Amriat the other day was blaming me for holding a meeting at Zambia. The party president, I mean the party chairman Aaron goes to the party headquarter. His car was parked outside. I've been watching news the whole day. We actually and, have the footage and yes. it will be running in the background. And uh, when he entered through a small door, he was bundled into a vehicle, Amuriati's vehicle, and that's where they have kept him. He had to climb the fence and then scale down um, this evening, being rescued because he had been held hostage. For me, those events, because the, the, the headquarter now and on Nandara's directive is being guarded by Kanyama. We went for a meeting of National Executive Committee on 16th June, and I raised this formally with Amriya. For the first time, I have served FDC as a leader for the last eight years. We have never had Kanyama holding a, meet, a, a meeting under the guard of Kanyama. And he said there were people who wanted to come here and demand party cards. And I am going to not tolerate this. So the party, they are Kanyama. And this time, they brought a group from Kawempe, the one that has beaten a journalist. Very sad, the saddest moment of the FDC. These guys were on drugs a whole day. And after the havoc that they have wrecked, in the evening, they were paying them 30,000. Then they, they left. Who was so, paying? Nanda is the one who is paying there. He's the paymaster. So this is what is taking place at the FDC. Even to access it these days on directives of Nandala, the, the party headquarters full-time is closed. They first look at your face, so for you, you can enter. So this has been a build-up. By the time we went for the meeting in Zambia, all these things had happened. Now the National Executive Committee cannot see it. The issue of the money that came from Seven, I am not the first person to raise this. As I speak to you now, there has been an investigation in the FDC which Nanda and Amuriate have compromised. They are the ones who appointed the investigators. Uh, uh, Nanda appointed the secretary. Even the lawyer they put to that committee has not been allowed to look at the minutes. Nanda uh, wrote the report. The, what has transpired now, they can't allow even the National Council. I don't know whether in that atmosphere you can go to Najana Kumi and have a meeting. So the money that came in during election is a matter that has been discussed in the party, in meetings. Be before you delve into the money, yes. I think today's events would warrant a response from Honorable Nandala. Honorable, does the backstop with you on the violence that happened at the party headquarters today? Did you ever seek to block the party chairman from addressing the media? One, I also want to first uh, uh, apologize for what happened in Najana Kumbi. For the journalists who have been hurt, my apologies. And it's unfortunate I wasn't there. And according to my brother Semuju, looks he was there, he knows all the facts very well, but I wasn't there. But I want to state that one, we, when the chairman, which I've now got, which we're going to do an investigation, that the chairman came wanting to address a, a press conference. He came with his people. And I think this was just, according to what I'm hearing, a planned activity to come and put FDC leadership there in bad light. We always have a press conferences on Monday. And it should be organized by the secretary, the, our spokesperson. Now, if the spokesperson is not with him, who was run, if, so who was supposed to organize? Does the chairman organize press conferences? Unless Semuju is saying he had told the chairman to become a spokesperson that he has decided to do an address on a Thursday. I think this is where we go wrong. People wanting to assume they are clean, yet they are not. And today, I want the public to really listen to us. You will judge who is right and who is wrong. I want to state. I have not organized anybody to beat anybody in Najana Kumi. Now, the, the gate, which is saying is closed. You see, a gate is a gate. 
If you have come with a car, they will open for you. If you have come on foot, you will pass through I again. I want to show you the footage. Oh, you don't know what transpired. You're sure you don't know what transpired at the party headquarters? No, no, I think, you see what happened? Let me tell you today, I've been, you know, Institute of Certified Public Accountants. I've been more involved in that. Now, when you're telling me what happened, I wasn't in Niger to see, but I've seen that footage where the chairman was climbing. Now he said the chairman was locked in the car. They were Kanyamas. How would he leave Kanyamas if those were not his people? Because the Kanyamas would have held him. You can, this is just a decoy. These are the same people. You see, that's the fifth DC. How did they push him the other side? How did they get push him out if they are not his people? Do, do you want to suggest that uh, the chairman also wanted to get coverage for his drama? Of course, that's drama. You see, you are saying you have been arrested. You are in a car. You're a prisoner. So how did you escape from your captives? But, but Simon, you see, that's where I you, think chairman, that's where uh, you generalists Simon, go wrong. I, I think we need okay, the chairman wanted the drama. Is it the uh, chairman it who beat the journalist? Me, is it possible to allow me to speak? Yes, is it the chairman who beat allow the journalist? Allow me to speak. I think we should be having respect for each other. So if a man runs from the captives, <coughs> why wouldn't they follow him? So how he comes, he jumps, he goes even, he gets a, a car pickup, he drives, he said he had left his car. Where was the car? So this has... So a, this was stage managed drama? You can see for yourself. And who beat the journalist then? No, that's why I've said I've apologized. That's why I'm saying I'm, there's an investigation. But I'm saying the chairman came with these people. Are you getting me? And you see, that's why again we're saying, why? First of all, there was a press conference we organized in Najana Kumbi yesterday in response to what had happened on Sunday. At the same time, Katonga organized a press conference where everybody again was. Why, the, if chairman wanted to address a press conference, he had an opportunity to address it at the party But of course he was in Katonga. If he was in Katonga, why didn't he address it also in where? In Katonga. Okay. This double standard. Is it in the <coughs> chairman's right to address a news conference at the party headquarters he, as and when he wishes? He, he, when it's organized by the what? Uh, the party what? Spokesperson. Or oh, on a matter which is urgent in nature. It was. Uh, which one? I mean, he wanted to, to speak out on the crisis, which crisis at hand. No, the crisis has spoken about. Yes. And that's why when you asked ask us what is happening, the crisis has been spoken about. And that's what we're going to explain. Maybe if you want, I can go in it. And no, 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 no. Uh, 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 what I want to capture for the record, mm -hmm. the chairman just wanted to play drama for the Except today, the, today the Thursday. Mm. Why did they come on Monday? Okay. Let's get into the question of money. Let's, <clears throat> let's first finish this. The chairman of the party drives at the party headquarter, mm. he is not allowed to drive in. And the whole day the headquarter is closed. Because no he wasn't out. expected. But he has an office there. No moving in, no moving out. And I have it on record. You see, Nandala can attempt to be intelligent. He called, you not aware, because you can see, this is how this thing started. And that's why I don't want to be jumping from one thing to another. Nanda calls the staff there, don't allow me to go to address a press conference. Amriat calls, don't allow to address a press conference. Later on, Amriat says, okay, if they are going to address a press conference, I must come. That's why we are seeing two chairs. And I think along the way, these days Amriat works uh, more on instructions of Nanda. They said, Obidu, you will not address it. So why didn't they allow him to drive in? Were well, you aware of <clears> this <throat> press conference? I, I and in your capacity as official spokesperson of the party, why were you absent? Every FDC officer can address a press conference, whether they are youth league. In this particular case, we have a national council coming up next week. It is being organized by the chairman. Assuming he wanted to brief the party and the country about the national council on, on 28th July. You call me if you want my assistance. But I'm not a staff that I must be the one organizing a press conference. That's why I didn't organize theirs. So really, today, the events at Najana Nkumbi further reveals who Nandara and Amriyat are. Who is Nandara to FDC? You can, you can ask him. Extremely uncultured. That you can't even allow a party chairman to enter party headquarters. No, but he says he wasn't present. He only got a brief later in the day. On the journalist being beaten, he has said, very sorry, we are going to investigate. On the party chairman scaling down a fence, 
he was stage managing a drama. Same explanation of NRM, blaming victims. Let's talk about the money that is causing all the trouble at Najan and Kumbi. For the past four months, ever since BCJ laid everything bare before council, the matter has been <coughs> brewing within the party ranks. Why is it exploding now? You see, the <clears throat> money came into the FDC in the 2020 general elections. The FDC leaders and senior leaders, including Dr. Wesige, in the interest of not soiling the party, attempted to have this matter resolved internally. Until, and I don't want to go through all the history, until there was a meeting at uh, Mr. Ambassador Waswabiriguaz uh, Busabara Beach. At that meeting, Nanara Mafabi rolled his sleeves to begin boxing Dr. Vesige. That's how he stopped there. Vesige was uh, generous. He didn't want to go through that. You know, Nanara likes fighting. Fighting is one way he supplements his other human flaws. The other day we were in the National Executive Committee, I mean the Working Committee, and he was fighting Ingrid Turinawe. He likes fighting. At this age, you should not be fighting. Then he was rolling his sleeves, wanting to beat Vesige. Vesige gave up on the issue of the money. What prompted Vesige to speak about this money is a smear campaign by Nandara in another area where he excels. They have been going around saying Vesige doesn't like me, Vesige doesn't like us because of this tribe. BCG, this, this, BCG, this, this, BCG did not campaign for Amuriat. Yet I can tell you for sure, I, had, I sat in a meeting at BCG's place with Nandara, with Amuriat, with Ekanya, with Wafura, with Virigua, with Sebuguao. And BCG said, I am not going to participate in these campaigns. He actually said, I'm going to construct a shed there. You guys can go for your campaigns. You return and find me here reading books. Now, in all the meetings, it is Vesige. Vesige, Vesige, Vesige. That's why Vesige had to come out and say, guys, the reason, the reason I did not go to campaign was because Nandara disbanded the campaign bureau and then chose to run it at his residence in Chambogo. But also there was this issue of unexplained money that came into the FDC. Perhaps as you continue, I just need to tell our viewers out there who've been on Twitter and uh, Facebook, that you can download your Afro mobile app and watch us from there. Um, just scan the QR code on the screen now so that you are able to be part of the discussion uh, as we talk about the raging FDC crisis. Yes, you may continue. So the, <clears throat> by basically coming out, the other FDC leaders didn't want this matter to play in the public. That's how they went to stop. Nandara was grabbing a microphone to explain himself. Mm. And I think people restrained him, included the Odo Taiwa, former MP, Bushen Municipality. He said, can we put it together, an elders committee? We go in two meetings, including meeting of National Executive Committee, and Amriat said, there are no more elders in FDC. The few ones who are there uh, have taken sides. We insisted, because Amriat had said, if we continue with the election, which is another subject that has caused us all these problems, because Nanda and Amriat are organizing um, semblance of an election. And I have told, I said that in Zambia, even if you want to cheat elections, just run from Museven. Museven will register voters, he will display voters register, he will issue cards, and then he will proceed to cheat. But these ones want to cheat before the exercise. Nandala on 6 July, 6 June, he wrote a letter instructing people to go ahead with the elections and he said the register, we shall send you a computer, we shall send you books and you will, regist, you will generate a register as the exercise is going on, the register that the electoral commission will use to organize the elections. Can, 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 can I request that uh, we hold the matter of elections and first look at the money. Honorable Nandala, you're being accused of having picked money in huge sums from Bank of Uganda on a given date, took part of it to Besige's residence, and that kick-started the storm that we are seeing now. 
How much did you pick in the first place? Oh, first of all, thank you so much. First, to begin with, I want to, uh, I want to tell the public uh, that the Secretary General has the following roles. It is under Article 28, 4, and I can really go to B. One is the principal executive and accounting office of the party. Mm -hmm. Two, the head of the secretariat. C, secretary to the delegates conference. Now, if you're going to have a national council and you're going to discuss, you need to discuss it with your secretary. And the secretary is the secretary what? General. So to show you that uh, I think people are reading things upside down is where I want to correct that. If honorable uh, Ambassador Birigo wanted to deal with the issue of national council, I would have been the person to be invited to handle how far we prepared, how are we going to do the exercise. It is me with the secretariat. Now, if you are coming alone, and the thing we are going to address people on the, you have already put a notice in the paper inviting people. They are going to come. What would be now preparation is to invite. Because this is not a, a, a place where you are going to come and say, we are going to tell the public how far prepared. You know your members, of members of National Council. I wanted to make that first clear. Two, uh, 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 would you say the, that I want to pretend to be intelligent? Yes, I am. If, if you are questioning, I'm, I'm very intelligent, by the way. But to even say I rolled my sleeves, I want somebody here to say, which day has he ever seen me with a long sleeved shirt? You, I want somebody to mention it. Unless I, I, I followed the court. But I, my shirt is always a short sleeved shirt. And uh, that's why I want to tell you that the people like me are just habitual liars because I don't have a long sleeved shirt. You are talking of. Okay. Language. What was there a, a charged council meeting no, no, I'm that coming. ended no, no. prematurely? No, I'm not. That's why I think the meeting of Sabala, which they are talking about, that I folded. No. And I want to tell you that that day when we had the last meeting, I never knew that the following day, Dr. Yesige was going to launch PFT, which I wasn't aware. And uh, that's the day he said, no, I'm not coming. I'm going to away. The following day, I had him launching the what? PFT. Now, to say that uh, there was a smear campaign, I have been to Dr. Yesige many times. And I think one time I was being mistaken that I might be the heir to Dr. Yesige maybe in campaigns. I have been in those meetings. And I can state this, if uh, anyone wants to say, remember. In the meeting when Dr. Yesige said he was not going to stand, Samuju got up and said, I, if a doctor doesn't stand, I will not support anybody, unless he applies to me. Ingrid said, I can only support what? Ingrid was not in that meeting. Please, let me. Me explain. and Ekanya are the only people in that meeting. I am ex no, you you see the himself. problem where if you are not a good listener, then that's a problem. I'm no, explaining. No, you, that, that doesn't give you room to lie. No, I'm saying that, that meeting, honest. I am honest. There are many people in that meeting when Dr. Ingrid was not there. I want to state this, that you got up and said, I cannot support anybody apart from Dr. Biasig. Any other person who wants Was to Ingrid in the meeting? No. Ingrid said, I can only support you. Dr. She was Biasig. not in that meeting. There were many people. You see now he's mentioning four people. I'm telling you that meeting had many people invited. 